Hello Floss to Vlog Time to See. This is uh, the official Mermaid's Cove. It's my channel where I talk about my cross stitching hobby and my other crafty things. Um, it has been over a month. Uh, I have just been, I don't know about anybody else here, but I've just been back to back either social engagements or people visiting it from out of town and then work just completely went crazy. <laughs> so you have not heard from me in a little bit. Um, but I did want to hop on here. I have a few videos that I'm going to put out. Um, it's today is July 9th. Yep, today's July 9th. Wow, it has been a minute. Um, so it's time for mid year whip parade. So I'm planning on doing something like that. And I'm actually have all the things together to get my mirror belly that I had finished for framing. So I'm going to do a separate video. Um, not really tutorial, but just going, going through my process of how I do that. Um, if anybody's interested, I'm going to frame this myself. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through what I've worked on since then. I've really only really touched like three whips, so I'm going to show you those. Um, like I said, work's been really busy. Um, other things have come up. So I'm going to show you that. Uh, I also have my birthday in June, so I'll be showing you some of the stuff that I bought. I'm really saving a lot of funds to go towards the retreat this month, a uh, Stitch Florida retreat that I'll be going to. Um, so I didn't get too much, but uh, my work does this thing where they give you like an Amazon gift card, so I bought some things with that. Um, I don't know if anybody else is like this, but I like to use up the gift cards before I completely forget that they exist or else I'll never ever use them. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you what the mirror blade that I finished. This is my nightingale. Um, I finished stitching her uh, last month in June and this is the one that I'll be framing. Um, because the fabric is really, I mean, you can still kind of see the, right, I have it this on like a quilt and press thing. You can still see it through the fabric here. Um, I'm probably going to end up backing it with a black mat board. So that way the, you can't see, well, I don't know. I don't know, the sheerness of the fabric just seems like it would stand out if I did it on white, which is how I usually do my pieces. But yeah, I'll bring you in close here. I did her skin uh, two over one tent and I adjusted some of the charting so it wouldn't be all blocky so I'm happy with how that turned out um, I was surprised because in the pattern it called for number four chronic braid and when I was reading the instructions like I was kind of dreading it because I was like okay great I'm gonna have to like stitch that two over one but no the instructions actually said to stitch it one over one um, I haven't tested this here lately, but it's supposed to be like glow in the dark chronic. So maybe after I frame it, I'll try to like expose it in the sun and see if it really does glow in the dark. But um, a lot of the beads that I used were just beads from Stash. I'll take you over here. You can see the beaded fringe down here on your dress. I used some, I think the chart, if you look at the picture, um, it uses white bugle beads. I went ahead and just swapped it out for some silver ones because I didn't have white. Or maybe I had white, but maybe not in this size. And I think it kind of goes well with um, the grays in her dress. And there's some nice patterns here. The lower skirts. There's the centers to those roses. There's beading these roses and some beading down here. I believe my husband's phone's going off. Sorry about that. But yes, I'm really happy with how she turned out. Um, I, yeah, so I'll be framing her. Um, I'm thinking I'm actually going to be able to bring this along for show and tell for the retreat before I hand it over to who this is going to. So that'll be good. Um, so I spent most of my time stitching on that. The other uh, whip that I worked on was my sow. 
my Ever After song that's being hosted by Forbidden Fiber Co. Uh, I guess this would be the right orientation to show it to you. I, this would, is, I guess, some kind of spoilers if you're doing the song and you haven't seen these yet, but. This is where we're at. I'm working on the weekly release for this week. It just says prunes and I'm working on the pull of prunes. But it's got some really nice quotes from the movie so far. Um, it's got the one where um, Danielle threw the apple at the prince because she thought he was just stealing the, their horses. It's got when uh, the stepsisters are arguing about their eggs in the morning. Um, I think, well I can read some of these out if you can't see them. It says your aim was to just otherwise. And that's in response to when she realizes he's the prince. And she's like, I'm sorry I didn't see you. And he's like, uh, I'm pretty sure he saw me. You hit me plumb square in the head. Uh, I said I want four minute eggs, not four one minute eggs. And where in God's name is our bread? They're complaining about the eggs. Um, some people read because they cannot think for themselves. That was a dig at uh, Danielle, who's our Cinderella in Ever After, because she's always reading her father's books. Uh, I wished for nothing more than to be free of my gilded cage. That's something the prince says. Prunes is something Daniela says to this old Furby guy who's like trying to hit on her while they're trying to sell their stuff from the farm at the market. Um, I should leave walking on water to the son of God. Fortunately, I tripped over an angel. That's said by uh, Da Vinci. Um, he's trying out these like boat shoes and while Daniela's swimming. swimming. <laughs> They both kind of startle each other. Um, you cannot leave everything up to fate. Boy, she has a lot to do. That's in response when he's talking to the prince about how he finds who his one true love is, like whether he should go through for with the marriage his dad has arranged or he should try to leave his own life. And then these are still all the other blocks that we have to go. I'm going to be really interested in which one's going to end up on this last block. It's like the biggest section. But yes. Keeping up with this as best I can. I'm still loving this fabric. Very pretty. Um, it's I think yeah, this is 32 count Belfast. Um, all of the materials I'm using are the called for kit materials that I bought as a kit for the style. So I'm still taking that to work and working on that. Okay, I found it. Sure enough, I had left the. I brought all the materials with me as far as the threads, but I hadn't brought the actual Q snap that it's in. So I still have it on the Q snap here for work. So this is where it's at right now. Again, I'm stitching this on a, I guess it's a upholstery linen. It's not necessarily an even weave. You can kind of tell, right? It seems like this is kind of like elongated or I don't know, part of that's the pattern, but part of it is the fabric as well. But I'm doing a Sailor Moon conversion. I can pop in a picture of what the original looks like. But this is where I'm at with it so far. Um, I wanted to get the a lot of the alterations that I was doing first done and then uh, start on the letter behind her because I'm not really changing too many colors in that. I still haven't decided. I'm probably, well, I guess I am. I'm probably going to be adding a moon. And since I still have some of the thread left over from Nightingale, the Mirabilia, uh, that's glow in the dark the grapefruit clinic it's supposed to glow in the dark i might use that for the moon um so she'll be holding the moon instead of the sparkles that the fairy was holding in the original so yeah um those are the only really three things that i've worked on since all the way back in may um i still have plenty of whips i still have plenty of plans um i bought a few charts that i've shown already in past videos um, I don't know if I'm going to start those or not. I have plenty of mermaids that I could start. Um, my birthday did pass without me starting anything new, which is something I haven't decided if I'm going to change it or not. I might decide when things like quiet down a bit more, maybe after the retreat. Or I could have a retreat start. I haven't decided on that as of yet. But yeah, that's everything. Um, uh, this fabric is close to... A 28 count um i think when i 
kind of the threads and my nightingale was also a table linen that I dyed um that one's also close to like a 28 count but it's not either one of those well the table linen actually might be close to an evening weave but I know this one isn't this one's a little off um so that's the details on those um hopefully soon once I get the video I'm gonna record another video where I actually put get everything together to frame the marabilia and I'll try to film some of that and get that together and have that edited so you can see that soon too but other than that um those are all the things I've been working on um the other thing I have I've already went ahead and gifted today so I don't have it to show but um one of the things that I bought since the last time I did a video is not cross stitch related but I also crochet and um, I like to crochet baby blankets, especially like the, I like to do like a one color blankets. Um, I don't like to do a lot of piecing together. So this is like a really good pattern book for me. And it's got like some really nice lacy designs. Um, if you're interested in crochet, this is the Keepsake Baby Afghans, um, seven designs by Kate Metters, Meters from Leisure Arts. Um, I really like this one. Um, I found this at the local thrift, craft thrift store that opened up nearby. So I got this there. I also got a couple other crochet pattern books. We have this one, Classics for Baby. Has some interesting designs in there as well. This one. a lot of most of the patterns yeah they have like some just some basic ones i think these are a little more fancier you can see them on the back they're a lot more lacy and then i also bought this it's like a small pattern book it's got eight projects in there um let's see those pictures let's see if there's some more pictures i can show you Uh, there you go. So some of these are multicolored. I w I don't mind trying some of those. I just don't. I don't know. I tend to not like having to piece stuff together if I can help it, which is kind of strange because like, so for this one, I actually did the blanket on the cover and I finished it and gifted it already. Um, this one actually only took me like three days, which isn't too bad, and it's just a baby blanket. It's not like a full afghan. And I was, I did one of like the bulk one pound baby blanket yarn, white yarn. Um, so it didn't, uh, I didn't, um, you know, have to change threads too much, but it did call for you to like do a bunch of finishing off and starting at different places when we were working on the edging. So I ended up having to do more starts than stopping than I anticipated and actually wasn't too bad. So maybe I should go back to trying some piecing together projects for crochet so I got those there um let me see I have so much stuff around here yeah. okay so I did buy a couple brands so I got one of these they had it in their scrapbooking section I have some this sometimes that I use to like tape the paper to the back of the frames when I finish framing my stuff I line the edging and then put the I guess it's a dust cover on the back with this. And mine right now, you can buy refills. Um, I think I did actually end up buying some Scotch double-sided tape to try as well instead of using this, and it's also like a permanent solution. So, but I saw this there and it was only 25 cents. So I grabbed that. I have some drapery weights. I was gonna try to use this. Um, I have some ideas for like some pin cushions that I want, or some drums that I want to try, and I was planning on maybe putting a couple of these at the bottom to like weigh it a bit. And they have those there for you to sell. Um, I found some nice extra strong, I guess it says it's bullion thread and it's black. I don't know if this would be good for like finishing or even um, lacing. But I got that. And then I also got, they have like these mini creatures. I think I've already shown some, but I got another little octopus and I think these are also supposed to or at least I think the chicken she showed me like under black light or whatever 
they glow in the dark or something like that. It's interesting. And then they had some of these, which is like the fairies from um, Neverland. The Disney fairies. I know this one for sure is Tinkerbell. And they had different poses too for Tinkerbell. And I just grabbed this one. I thought that was cute. I'm going to put her on the edge of my recording tripod. Like I have my other creatures sitting on right now. So that's everything I bought at that craft store. So not all of it is cross stitch haul, but some of it I'm planning on using for my finishes. And then the other thing that I got was, so Hobby Lobby recently had their clearance on their um, cross stitch stuff. I'm not really a big fan of the uh, kits and stuff that they have switched over to when they did their last clearance. But, um, oh yeah, here's the double-sided tape I was talking about. I got some of that. They also had all of their beaded stuff on clearance. So I actually went through their beads and grab some colors. They had some Miyuki, which is a good um, brand. They had some pinks. So I grabbed these tubes. It's like a purpley and then a pinky pink. And then they also had some of their uh, check glass beads on sale. So there's like a lavender color and like a bronzy crystal gold color. And I also had um, some of their treasures. So this one's kind of beat up, but I got some butterflies and some stars and some more stars. And then I think, so I went to two different Hobby Lobbies near me. And the other Hobby Lobby actually had more beads. And they also had more cross stitch materials, but wasn't anything that I thought I saw like I needed. Um, they had a lot more butterflies. I think I grabbed all the butterflies that they had there. Yeah, they had like three packs and I got them all. Um, Autumn Lane Century, um, they had two more Dark Queens. They were supposed to release. One is for the air, or skies, of the skies, I think. And the other one is of fire? Dark Queen of the Earth, Dark Queen of the Seas, Dark Queen of the Skies, Dark Queen of the Flames? I don't know how they're gonna like label that one. But I figured... Um, you know, sky, butterflies, it'll work out. I still got some of these drops. You know, there's a lot of drops that Mary Bills use for, you know, I know the, I, I think I already have the ones that I need for the Siren, Siren Shipwreck? I'm like blanking on these names, but it, it's one of that Mary Bills that's holding that big chandelier. She has a few of those. Um, they had hearts over there, so I grabbed one, a pack of the hearts and some more stars. And then they had a lot more beads. Um, so I grabbed... I'm wondering if I grabbed some more of the... So I grabbed a different purple. They also had their check glass beads. So I grabbed a different purple there. I grabbed... A different purple. Yeah, these are different purple. Um, of their Magnifica beads. This purple. Um, I think I needed a size 8 bead for one of the mermaids in blue. So I've been kind of like, I think I have enough fabric in my stash. And I, of course, I'm, I'm planning on dying some more. I have a lot more fabric set aside to die. I'm just waiting to figure out which projects I want to match it up to. So I don't need any more fabric in my stash. I have tons of charts. Of course, I'm still going to get... I think Mirabilia's come out. Nora Corbett's come out with quite a few mermaids this year. And I haven't bought any of them yet. Um, I think I give myself like a year to figure out if I really want it or not. And then I pull the trigger. Um, these were some other purple ones that I found that I liked. These were some blues. That they had really pretty blues. I got on clearance. Get another blue. This is kind of like a matte color, but I figured I'd be able to use it for the mermaids. They have some creams and whites, and a couple yellows. One's like really, really bright, and the other one's like a nice orange, golden yellow. 
And they have some browns, grays. Uh, beige colors. They had some, I got a bright green, like a olive green, that color. That bright green, especially I can see myself using it for like Christmas ornaments. And they have like this bright red color. And these are really cool. They're red garnet. And if you look really closely, I don't know if I'm showing that right, but they have like I guess it kind of is supposed to replicate actual garnet stones. It has like that reddish, brownish coloration to it. It's really cool. So it'll be interesting to find something I can use that for. Um, and then for work with the Amazon gift card, it's kind of weird because they're doing like, I don't know if anybody else's work does this, but it's like limited things you can get. You can't just order anything you want. Or if you do, choose or I think you want it like you don't get as much so I think out of their limited selection what I ended up getting were Q snaps um these are I think I got one 11 inch and one 17 inch and I made these two 11 by 17 frames so this will be good um if I want to start some of the full coverage charts that I got um yeah so that was it for haul I didn't really grab much of anything else I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything that I spent money on since I last saw you. I've been trying to save most of my money for the retreat. Um, so that's it. Uh, I've just been really busy. So sorry you haven't been on here. Um, oh, the other reason why I decided to record a video. Um, I this is so wild. I was looking at my well. It was time to do the mid year whip parade. Um, so I was thinking about that. Uh, but I, when I went on here to check where I left off, I noticed I almost already have 200 subscribers. Um, thank you. <laughs> That's surprising because I haven't been on here doing regular videos. Um, but yeah, my subscriber count has jumped significantly. Um, once we do reach 200, which is like only, I don't know if it's just one person away at this point. I was really surprised how close I was to begin with. Um, thank you so much for coming and watching me. Um, Again, if there's anything that you have any questions about or anything you want to see, I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, oh, I did get a question about counting pens. These, I haven't bought these recently, but I did dig them up in my stash. I have, like, my craft supplies tucked away in different places, and I finally found these. Um, I had got these at Smart at one point or another. Um, so I can use these to show you how I use counting pens. I got a question about that, how I use them. Um, I can show them when I'm going to frame my mirabilia how you can count things off with them. Um, I've also been using these for my sal. I can show you real quick. So, right, I finish all the frames for my sal. And then, depending on where we have to start, like here, I think I used it to count off. And then like, depending on where the first stitch is in this corner, I'll count off like which line it has to be in and then like how far down this way to like orient myself to where I have to start the stitch for this segment um, you can do things like that um, I also it's nice to have like another sharp thing like when you have frog stitches sometimes I have another needle sometimes I don't so I can also use those for that um, when I'm framing it helps to have it to point where like the middle of the you know width wise and length wise it is so you can center it on your frame so I'll show you that um floss tubers I've actually like went a couple weeks without watching floss tubes so I had a bunch to catch up on um been watching a lot of the regular people followed a lot of new people I could not list everybody if I tried um but I like I have all those videos to watch um, I think I've been putting them on a playlist and then trying to watch them. Sometimes I have uh, opportunities to watch them at work. Um, I know I've been keeping up with Sitcherista, Danielle, I would love her videos. Um, I've been keeping up with Cross Stitch the Globe. Uh, I've been watching, uh, 
Gaming Jamie's Crafty Channel. There's been a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And there's been a lot, a lot of videos I've been watching here recently to try to catch up. Um, but yeah, I'll text some of those people uh, in this video so you can go out and watch them. Um, they all have a pretty good array of different projects that they're working on. Um, and of course, everybody is doing their WordPress, so there's plenty to watch on Plus 2 right now. Uh, and I guess I'll be throwing my, mine in the mix here soon. Um, I think for my Wood Parade, I'm not going to show you everything that I showed you in the first Wood Parade. I'm going to try to center on the things that I act actually touched. Uh, I think some of the things that I'm leaving out was like my... I'll probably pop in a picture to show you, but the status hasn't changed, right? I haven't touched those whips, so I'm probably just going to show you a picture of what they looked like last time you saw them. And that's probably going to be my Angel of Elegance. Uh, which is the Dimensions Gold kit that I was working on for Christmas. I like, usually work on my Christmas pieces around Christmas time, so you haven't, there's been no progress on that. Uh, there hasn't really been much progress on the other kit that I found that was already pre-started. Um, the Sky Hunter the by... Uh, it's a chart by Color Charts. Um, it's the Native American hunter shooting a bow at the sky with the clouds shaped like bisons. I haven't worked on that either. So I think those two are not going to be in the whip parade. I'll make a mention of them and I'll pop in a picture photo, but I won't actually be showing the, those whips. Um, but yeah, you'll see everything else that I've started and been working on. Um, and then hopefully I'll be able to record. I don't know how much I'm going to have to cut down that video, but record my process for how I work on framing my pieces when I decide to frame them myself. I don't think I've had anything professionally framed as of yet. I think I just tried to watch some other videos and get people's recommendations for the tools to use. And so I've been collecting things here and there and try to find my own process. But I think I gifted something to my church and uh, my dad helped me with that. And he said that in his opinion, it looked professionally framed. So I'll take the kudos. Um, it was definitely a cheaper option than going out and doing it myself. Um, I have had, which is a suggestion somebody else gave me, so I'll just mention it here real quick, of getting, like, if you want matting for your frame, you can get the matting done at, like, a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby, um, and that is cheaper than getting the full thing framed. So I did do, like, I went in and got, like, a mat cut for a pretty big angel that I was gifting to the church, um, and it was, like, maybe 20 bucks just to get the mat cut. And then I think 20 bucks for the mat itself for the backing that I used. So it was like $40 total. So $40 and then I thrifted the frame and I had the other materials to frame it. So less than what I've heard people spending like two or $300 framing, professionally framing it. So, so I still ended up being cheaper at the end. Um, so another way to like make it more professional, but uh, reduce the cost. So that was a good tip. But yeah. Um, it's good to be back, good to be recording again. Um, hopefully you like you what you see. Um, I'm thinking for the 200 subscriber giveaway, I might actually be doing like the a chart giveaway with the materials you need. Um, maybe some of my smaller charts. We'll try to do something different this time. Um, but yeah, we'll see when we get there. Like I said, I think last time I checked it was very, very close, which I was surprised. And very thankful. Thank you for coming and watching. Uh, I've missed doing this, so I'm hopefully getting back into a routine. I don't know that I'll be doing much recording when I go to the retreat, but I'll maybe try to do some snippets here and there. Maybe do a little vlogging of the experience as we go. We'll see. Thank you. I hope you've been enjoying your summer. Hopefully you haven't been getting any terribly bad summer weather. I think we've had, like, there was a cart. We're getting some like hurricanes up the coast that's been affecting the weather throughout but so far knock on wood not too bad so i wish you a good rest of your summer i wish you plenty of time to stitch and until next time bye